Love that isn't loved is lost love. Something like that? Oh, it has a, it has a booklet. We're here in a nice forest and looking for some mushrooms. Welcome to the town of Tangemünde. I wanted to show you this place because it is one of my favourite German towns. It's pretty well preserved and I've always had lots of fun walking around the old town centre, down to the river and up to the castle. So I'll bring you along and tell you a bit about the history of this place and a story that is connected to it. The first time Tangemünde is mentioned is in 1009, in a chronicle as Civitate Tongermuthi, which means town at the mouth of the Tongerer River, Tanga in German. Medieval chronicler Bishop Thimar of Merseburg refers to a lowland castle, which was likely built around 925. The location on top of a hill overlooking the river and flat plains beyond is certainly advantageous. For this reason, it was used to secure the borders of the German Empire along the Elbe. The east of Germany always had a lot of influence from Slavic tribes and some, like the Wends, a West Slavic tribe, still live there. The river formed a natural border and the land of the Saxons would have been to the west of the Elbe. As a town, it first shows up in a document from 1275. It became a place where tolls were charged for boats passing along the river Elbe as this is the place where the river Tanger flows into the river Elbe, the Elbe being one of Germany's longest and most prolific rivers. It was also popular with the local nobility and during the 14th century the castle was the secondary residence of Emperor Karl IV, which is why you will see a statue of him later on. Tangemünde joined the Hanseatic League and during the 15th century it lived through its golden age. During this time the town hall, walls and gates were built. The massive church in the town centre, St. Stephen's Church, was extended in the Gothic style at the time. However, there was a bit of trouble in 1488 when there was a rebellion against a beer tax. And as a result, the local nobility left the castle and shifted their residence to Berlin. On the 13th of September 1617, there was a massive fire which destroyed most of the town. A young woman was blamed for setting the fire. She was an orphan and embroiled in a lawsuit to claim her rightful inheritance after her father's death, which she lost. She was accused of setting a fire in revenge and was tortured in gruesome ways before being burned at the stake. Nowadays, the consensus is that she was completely innocent. Her name was Greta Minde. There's a statue of her in front of the town hall. Writer Theodor Fontana used the story for his novella, which he simply named Greta Minde. It was published in 1880, and it is part of the local school curriculum, so I also had to read it in school. His version of events deviated from the original story. In the novella Grete, short for Margarete, the German form of Margaret, is the daughter of a wealthy merchant. Her mother, the second wife, is already dead and her father dies just after her confirmation. 
the only family she has left as her half-brother, the only child from her father's first marriage, and the half-brother's wife. Both are cold and cruel towards Greta. She eventually falls in love with a young man and they run away together and join a circus. Greta becomes pregnant and gives birth to a child, but her lover falls ill and ends up passing away. But he makes her promise that she will return to her half-brother to be taken care of. So Greta makes her way back with the baby, but her half-brother and his wife are refusing to support her. Greta goes to a court to demand the inheritance she is entitled to from her father. But the half-brother manages to convince the court that Greta doesn't have any lawful claim to the money and she loses the case. Unlike in real life, in the story she sets fire to the town in revenge. But not just that, she also kidnaps her half-brother's child and takes it and her own child up to the top of a church tower and watches the town burn from there while her half-brother and his wife can only watch the burning tower collapse with Greta and their child inside. I don't know if this can be counted as vindication, since here Greta chooses her own fiery fate and takes revenge, while in real life she was blamed, tortured and burned. Of course, the historic Fachwerk-style half-timber buildings you see nowadays were all constructed after the fire. During the Thirty Years' War, Swedish troops attacked the castle in 1640. Since the castle was damaged, it lost its strategic advantage and Tangemünde thereafter slowly lost importance as a trading town, though it is still very much preserved. The present-day castle has been done up in the 20th century, though, starting in 1902, and was sold and turned into a hotel in 1999. The town did receive some damage in World War II, and the nearby bridge over the Elbe was blown up by German forces to halt the advances of US troops. After the war, Tangamunde became part of the DDR, but care for the old buildings was sporadic. After the reunification, however, much effort was put into restoring as much of the historic buildings and structures as possible. And this is why, nowadays, you can see all the beautiful buildings and architecture. And I very much enjoy coming here and I also like to take people that visit me. So, of course, I took my partner here. And especially that time of day when the sun was setting, it's created such a beautiful atmosphere and all the buildings were bathed in a beautiful golden light. And it is this church in particular and just its huge size and scope that makes me feel very humbled when I look at it. I hope you have enjoyed feasting your eyes on this beautiful town as much as I did as I was walking through it. Now, let me take you back home to my very childhood. For some background, I was born in Russia just before the fall of the Soviet Union. As the borders opened, people mingled. My mom met a German construction worker who became my stepdad. And at the age of five, I moved to Germany to Stendal. I have already talked a bit about my story in a different video, so I will link it for you if you're interested. We started off in a small flat in a concrete block part of town, then moved to a bigger flat in a different concrete block part of town, where I went to primary school and had my own room. My primary school has since been demolished, and so has the building we used to live in. When I was 10, my stepdad's mother died and we inherited her house in the village, 
so we ended up moving there and the rest of my school days were spent in other towns but we would come to Stenda mainly for shopping and cinema since it is the central town of this region it is also considered a central knot for the train infrastructure and lots of roads are going through here as well It was also part of the Hanseatic League, and you can see the sculpture in front of the town hall, which is a Hanseatic knight, I suppose, and you find them in pretty much all Hanseatic towns and cities. Archaeological excavation actually revealed a well from 889 for the earliest settlement before it became a borough or town. It received its town right in 1160 from Albrecht the Bear. And when it was a village, it was known as Stendale, meaning Stone Dale or Valley. There are many beautiful churches all over town. Perhaps in the future I will show you a bit more of this place. For now, this is just a short walk through the town centre. But I have to say, the town looks much nicer and cleaner now than I remember it. When I lived here in my younger years, it seemed dead and I was longing to get out. Now, I appreciate it for all its parks and old architecture. So there's a field of barrows here, Kurgans. There could be one there. It's a bit of a lump. <laughs> and somebody left a little fairy creature. Somebody left a little note. I don't know quite how obvious it is. There's a bit of a round shape there. There's a round shape there. There's something else there. Uh, that, that's definitely what I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I can see one over there with the wooden structure on top. Yeah, so I think that one was probably the most obvious. It's quite an obvious round shape there. A barrow. So, this is the top of it. It looks like it might have been dug up either that or the roof is just caved in yeah sure so would you call it a chambered tomb no 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 chambered tombs uh, are made of stone i see uh, this is an earthen mound i see okay that's the difference between a chambered tomb and a barrow yeah so here's another group of barrows here and then one over there. Let's go on top. This one doesn't look quite as rugged on top, but you can see even more over there. And over there, and over there, and over there. So yeah, that's a field of barrows. So what these barrows could possibly be are Slavic barrows, which may have been done by the Wends, because we are in the east of Germany here, in the early Middle Ages and Middle Ages during the folk movements, the Slavs were living in the east of Germany. Not the entire area of former Eastern Germany, but sort of in the east. Number two is that there are spiders all over the place so yeah there's spiders between the trees and you can walk through them that's why you can avoid them <laughs> yeah. 
So this one is a bit more um, caved in. Oh, there's a big hole in here. Big massive barrow. So here's one last barrow that we're going to visit. As I said, get to avoid the spiders. And this one also has a big hole in the middle. So why would they have a hole in the middle? Is it because they caved in or do you think somebody yeah. would have excavated? I think it's probably because they've caved in. That's why they that's why they have holes most of the time. Let me see. Sometimes that's caused by excavation. Yeah. Like if you if you sort of excavate into it. Yeah. The, of course. Yeah. As we're making our way back towards Perth, I want to thank you for watching. If you watched all three parts of my Germany trip, I hope you enjoyed. And I hope that you have a great day wherever you are. Take care and until next time.